Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. I am thrilled to welcome you to the Zero Prostate Cancer Facebook Live. Um, my name is Shelby Monier. I am Zero's Vice President of Patient Programs and Education. And today I am thrilled to talk about advances in, in diagnostics. And here with me today is Dr. Alan Chiglacian from Blue Earth Diagnostics. Dr. Chiglacian is medical director uh, with with Blue Earth Diagnostics. We also sadly were having a, a patient, um, a prostate cancer survivor here with us today. He has had something come up, but we are um, really lucky that he has been willing to record a video with us that will be ready in just a few weeks in, in October. So we will share that with you as soon as he is able to do that with us. Um, so with that, I want to welcome Dr. Chiglacian. Thank you for being here. Um, just one quick reminder before we get started, um, these, this information that we provide in these uh, Facebook Lives and these webinars um, is, is really for our education purposes only, not intended to be uh, medical advice or to replace any information that you might get from your medical team or with your doctor. So if you have specific questions about your case and your diagnosis, please be sure to talk that over with your healthcare team. Um, so thank you for letting me do that little bit of housekeeping information. Um, so uh, Dr. Chiglacian, let's get started. Um, we, uh, we, we, we know that imaging is a hugely important part of a patient's diagnostic journey. So we would love to hear um, a little bit about the new technology options for diagnosing and treating uh, individuals diagnosed with prostate cancer. Great, thank you very much for having me here, uh, Shelby. Very nice to meet you as well. There are several types of imaging that are used to diagnose and detect prostate cancer in both the primary or recurrent setting. We have things like transrectal ultrasound, CT, MRI, uh, bone scans. They all have um, different capabilities within this, this setting. And they're really utilized to find out more information about the prostate tumor, the extent of the spread of the cancer outside the prostate, and really potentially whether prostate cancer has spread to the bones which is an area where a disease with progression is really likely to be found. An injected diagnostic imaging agent, what we call a radio tracer or a radio pharmaceutical, could be used together along with a PET CT or PET MRI scan to provide more information than the previously mentioned um, imaging techniques. Great. So I know there's been so much excitement and congratulations to Blue Earth again on the FDA approval of Pasluma. Um, so just explain to our listeners what the heck that is and what the technology um, offers, maybe how it differs from other uh, exciting imaging options um, and, and how we expect it to advance treatment options for prostate cancer patients. Thank you. We, we've been very excited about Pasluma. Uh, Pasluma was previously referred to as RHPSMA 7.3. RH just stands for radio hybrid. Radio hybrid PSMA compounds um, could be radio labeled with imaging isotopes for PET imaging. PSMA itself stands for prostate specific membrane antigen, and it's just a uh, cancer cells. Normal prostate cells typically have PSMA, but it is usually found in greater amounts on prostate cancer cells. And imaging that targets PSMA could help find prostate cancer either upon initial diagnosis or if the cancer itself has returned or spread. So with the recent approval of uh, Prospasluma by the FDA for PET imaging in men with recently diagnosed prostate cancer um, who have suspected metastasis or spread and are candidates for initial definitive therapy, or if they already knew they had prostate cancer and now the cancer has returned based on seeing an elevation in their PSA level, the data which led to this approval was from two company sponsored trials that we, let, that we ran. One of them was called Lighthouse and the other was called Spotlight. Uh, one trial was for patients who were newly diagnosed with prostate cancer, that was Lighthouse, and the second was for patients with recurrent prostate cancer, and that was called Spotlight. Now, in the Lighthouse study, the results did show the sensitivity, or your true positive rate, to be in the range of 23 to 30 percent, which is generally consistent with data we've seen in some other PSMA trials. The uh, specificity, or your true negative rate, ranged from 93 to 97 percent in the trial. And in the spotlight study, the detection rate or the percentage of patients who had a positive scan within the total overall patient population was 83%. Uh, 
and at low PSA levels, less than 0.5, where you really want to spot disease most early on in the recurrent setting, the detection rate was a 64%. Yeah, that's that's really exciting. I do have to comment on the names of the trials, like how how creative, right? We really have to be able to see the prostate cancer cells so that we can attack the prostate cancer cells. So that Very just important. a little segue yeah. into, into the, the, the names of the trials. That's that's fun. Um, you know, as a patient advocacy organization, a patient patient facing organization, we care a lot about the patient voice. Um, and and really always want to make sure that that's included. So as as part of that, we do hear uh, a lot of questions about possible risks associated with any new treatment. We we know that those are uh, around for any treatment or any diagnostic agent. Um, would you mind diving into uh, any possible risks associated? Sure, and I'll run through the indication as well, postluma. So postluma in injection is indicated for pet of PSMA positive lesions in men with prostate cancer with suspected metastasis who are candidates for initial definitive therapy, so in the primary setting, and with suspected recurrence based on elevated serum PSA levels or in the recurrence setting. And to review the important safety information, image interpretation errors can occur with postluma pet, a negative image does not rule out the presence of prostate cancer, and a positive image does not confirm its presence. The performance of postluma in both the primary and recurrent prostate cancer setting is affected by serum PSA levels, and the uptake of the scan is not specific for prostate cancer. It could be in both malignant and benign lesions and normal tissues. The interpretation of the scan could depend on the reader of the image, particularly in the, in the prostate bed area. So consider multidisciplinary consultation and histopathology confirmation. The use of pustuluma does contribute to a patient's overall long-term cumulative radiation exposure. In adverse reactions were reported in, the great, in greater than or equal to 0.4% of patients in clinical studies, and these included common things like diarrhea, uh, blood pressure increase, and injection site pain. And for patients on androgen deprivation therapy, the uptake of pustuluma could be affected, but their effect on the performance of pustuluma has not been established. And to report suspected adverse reactions, you can please contact uh, the FDA. Thank you. Thank you. And I know that's very scientific and kind of the heavier information. Um, and we did make sure to pin that for all of our viewers um, in, in the Zoom or Facebook screen that you're that you're viewing this in because we want you to make sure that you can review it and, and really fully understand all of the, the all of that heavy, heavy information. Um, so uh, Dr. Triglacian, um, Let's talk about what kinds of patients, what type of patient might really benefit from Pustluma. Great. Yeah, to do that, I think it's um, best I, I share a brief patient story with you, um, which I think is impactful. This patient was a 58-year-old gentleman who had high-risk prostate cancer, and the pathology showed us that the tumor had spread beyond the prostate. The patient had surgery to remove his prostate, but his PSA level never went to zero. And that means that he still had active disease somewhere in his body. We don't know where. He subsequently had a postuma scan that showed disease in his pelvic lymph nodes and lymph nodes outside the pelvic area. And this could really allow a treating clinician the ability to provide a patient with appropriate therapy uh, moving forward. Right, because if we see it, we can treat it. We can take action on it, of course, and it gives us more information. More information gives us the ability to potentially um, move forward and take take action that we otherwise wouldn't have had that information for. Right, previously. Re really changes the treatment uh, landscape and, and plan for patients. Um, Absolutely. Really great. And and again, we'll, we'll have an additional patient story that we will share as soon as it's recorded. I'm so grateful for uh, that story. Thank you. And, and all of our patients who are willing to share their experiences. Um, so what is, you know, all of these advances are so exciting, but we'd love to hear your perspective on just general impact of postlima to the, the full prostate cancer community. Yeah, I think it's um, uh, very, very impactful with next generation imaging agents. Postluma itself, I think, has the potential to benefit patients is really an important diagnostic tool. It can offer more actionable clinical information than uh, conventional uh, scanning options, which were used um, in, in many previous years. Accurate imaging techniques are re really critical for clinical decision making. And from what we saw in our clinical studies, physicians often decide to change a patient's treatment plan based on doing the postluma scan itself. 
Now, out of the patients for whom we had sufficient information available to review for changes in treatment in our trials, 89% of the patients had a change in intended treatment. Of those, 91% had a major change in treatment and 9% had a minor change in treatment. So that just shows, shows us the impact of the scan itself. Very, very impactful. Yeah, hugely significant numbers there. Um, well, thank you. Thanks for, for um, diving into that and expanding that answer a little bit more. Um, so, you know, one of the questions we hear all the time at Zero is, this is great, it's exciting, this new approval, um, but can I even get it? Is it available to me where I live? Um, are you able to share any additional information on availability? Yep, Postluma is widely available across the country. We have um, 36 cyclotrons uh, that produce the radio tracer across the country um, as well. So I would really suggest that patients check with their referring doctors or hospitals, um, nuclear medicine departments to see um, the area in which they, they'd like to get the radio tracer and where and when they could get it. But there is widespread availability across the country at the moment with many cyclotrons um, that are able to produce postluma. Great. Yeah, very exciting. Um, you know, we hear a lot also at zero when we're speaking with the patient community, um, a, a big concern about just, is this going to be covered by my insurance? I know it's a challenging question to answer with um, the different insurance plans and some are employee sponsored and Medicare and Medicaid. And um, But do you have any insight there on, on whether or not uh, patients will be able to access this through insurance? Yeah, my, my suggestion would be right now would be for a patient to check with their hospital or referring doctor um, to check coverage at the moment. Of course, um, our hope would be for widespread coverage um, at the moment and in the near future. Um, but my best suggestion at the moment would be for a patient to check with their um, provider regarding coverage of, of postluma at the present time. Yeah, perfect. Um, we did actually get a question, and, and I apologize, I, I uh, should have said this earlier. Um, and if, you, if anyone listening does have a question, um, please go ahead and type that into the chat. We are uh, seeing those on the back end and, and we'll try to get to as many as we have time for. Um, but we did get one question, if you don't mind staying on for a bit. Um, and this, this patient uh, or individual, I should say, um, is wondering if you could share a bit more information about uh, what PSA readings, maybe the minimum or the best range, um, sh a, pa a patient should have to make the scan uh, the most useful? Yeah, we, we don't have a minimum PSA level at which a patient patient can be scanned. Um, in the recurrent setting, the, pa the PSA level needs to be elevated. And in that scenario, one of the data points that I mentioned um, said that a PSA of less than 0.5, the detection rate in our trial showed a 64% detection rate. From PSA levels of 0.5 to 1, the detection rate was 76%. So higher PSA levels in general mean higher detection rates, but we don't have a minimum PSA rating for the scan to be useful. You can find um, uh, positive lesions at, at very low PSA levels, you know, less than 0.2, and in higher PSA levels as well at the same time. Okay, great. Uh, I wanna just, is, is there anything else as we just wait for any final questions to come in that, that you would like to share? I think we're very excited about um, postluma in the prostate cancer um, community, and uh, we're happy to take questions at any time. Um, you can please contact Blue Earth Diagnostics, and we have a robust uh, medical team or a very engaged reimbursement team and a commercial team as well. So we're very happy to engage with the patient community um, to answer questions moving forward. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Chiglesian. Um, I'll just echo that if there are some questions that come in, um, and and zero is also happy to to share as as uh, as detailed medical information as we can get, which isn't very detailed, but um, always able to provide uh, lots of information and and um, facts that you can use to talk with your doctor about uh, your your specific diagnosis. Um, as we know there is no uh, kind of blanket answers for for our patient community. Um, well, I don't see any other questions that are coming in, but again, Dr. Chiglesian, I just want to thank you um, very much for your time. And uh, again, congratulations to, to Blue Earth Diagnostics on this exciting advancement. 
Thank you very much. Thank you for having me here. Thank you.